We're at the Air Finance Conference in Dublin, Ireland, and I'm speaking with Ross Mitchell at, uh, from Bombardier. And Ross, what I'd like to do with you is go through the, the family the, yep. of airplanes. Mm -hmm. 2014 ended with a bang, a, yes, a, good, a good one, so yep. to speak. Uh, Santa Claus came late, but he came. <laughs> Should we start? Let's talk with this, the Q. Yes. So on the Q400, we had uh, an order at the end of the year from GCAS. It's a speculative order for uh, five Q400s plus 15. So it's quite positive for us because it's a lessor on the Q400. Very important. We're at the Air Finance Conference here, so clearly uh, lessors taking interest in the Q400 is very important. We see strong interest on the Q400 um, from a number of different regions. We've had a lot of success in Africa on the 400, principally because of its speed and range, as well as the fact that you can put a proper business class into the aircraft, which our competitors can't really do. Uh, we've seen uh, success in North America, continued success in North America, and again, it's the speed and the range of the airplane that are really the differentiator for us in North America. So, again, we continue to see a lot of interest in the airplane. We're quite happy where it's going. We see a lot of interest from various regions now in the high-capacity aircraft. So we can go all the way up to 86 seats. It's just we take out the forward cargo bay and you can put 86 seats into the airplane. Customers are quite interested in that. It drives a seat cost on the airplane that's very close to an A320, which means you can fly your airplane around at a fraction of the trip cost, but yet get the same unit cost. Very important for airlines, and so they're responding quite well to the Q400 these days. And that, of course, that 86 seats takes you right up to that ninth magical number of 90 that everybody talks about. Yeah, that's right. I mean, it's only four seats away, so it's getting to where you know the market was asking for a larger airplane. We responded by giving them modifications to the airplane we have, and we're satisfying that demand. Let's talk about CRJ. Yes. L a lot of questions about the future of the CRJ, but mm. it seems that you, st you still have interest in the airplane from customers. Yeah, absolutely. So. At the end of the year, we sold 24 more CRJs to a customer. It's an undisclosed customer, but uh, um, a very positive order for us. We still see the CRJ as an important and vital piece of our, our commercial aircraft uh, programs. We're continuing to work on bringing the cost down. The thing that's most important for the regional airlines is to have the lowest possible unit cost. The CRJ drives that. It's much lighter than the competition. Um, so we're quite happy with that. The 1000, of course, is in Europe now. We're delivering uh, the 14th airplane to uh, Hop Brit Air uh, in January. We've got more deliveries coming to Air Nostrum. Both airlines love the airplane. And again, it's, a, it's, it's the fact that it drives lower unit costs. It's very reliable. And the, the aircraft is common with the smaller aircraft. So an airline that already has a 900 or a 700 they have the experience necessary to operate the airplane right away. So the 900 and 1000 are doing quite well, and they are part of our future, a vital part of our future. There's, what we've discovered, that, or the way we've described it, is there's a bifurcation mm. in that particular segment where mm -hmm. there's the United States version of what is a regional jet, and then mm -hmm. there's everybody else's idea. Yeah. Um, scope clauses. Yes. What, what, what is your, your, your sense of scope clauses and how that plays out? for the future of the CRJ. You're, you're right, so the scope clauses mean that in the US we have an airplane, uh, the 900, that's at 76 seats. Clearly the 900 goes all the way up to 90 seats, so it's, it's the, the size of the aircraft is kept artificially low because of the scope clauses. <laughs> in Europe, if, they, if they're ordering 900s, they tend to be much closer to 86, 90 seats, and on the 1000 you're all the way up to 100 seats. So uh, scope clauses right now are where they are, uh, I suppose in the future we would uh, we would like to think the scope clauses will come up and as the scope clauses come up the CRJ 900 is in the perfect position where you could add more seats to a 900 and uh, it further improves the economics of the aircraft or you can bring a 1000 in and a, a 1000 at you know 86 88 seats is is a terrific airplane again offering very low seat costs and uh, it would provide an excellent platform for uh, regional airlines anywhere to, to expand their services. If you look at uh, 2015 for the CRJ, where do you see the big growth in demand? Where, where will be the big competitions this year? Yeah, I, I think on the CRJ you'll still see a lot of, a lot of demand in, in North America. Uh, the regional jet market in North America is still by far the largest. 
you'll see some activity certainly in Europe still. Uh, there are European airlines that are still interested in, in flying regional jets. Uh, other than that, there will be some activity, I would suspect, in, in Africa and, and Asia, but the, the bulk is still going to come out of North America. Okay, let's move to the, the one that everybody wants to know about, C-Series. <laughs> yeah. You've had some uh, recent activity there too. Yeah, so on the C-Series, we're in the flight test program. We have four aircraft flying. The fifth aircraft now has uh, the interior in it. We've been working on some testing with the aircraft interior. We had our cold soak testing in Montreal the other day. Uh, you know, uh, you need cold temperatures overnight to leave it outside to do the cold soak. And Montreal this time of year is cold, so we've, we've been doing some of that testing. Uh, the 300 is going through some ground testing and, and will fly in, in uh, a short while. So uh, we're quite happy with the development of the airplane. We're building hours on the 100s and uh, the test program is going well. Can you give us an idea of an update more or less of where you are on hours? Uh, we have exceeded, uh, we're beyond 800 hours on the, on the flight test program now. So it, it's quite a few hours and uh, we're getting a number of the performance numbers back to us so it's uh, it's interesting because we're seeing that the airplanes on target when when you say on target you mean the, in terms of the economics in terms of general performance numbers and and the economics would be one of those as you know fuel burn is an important important item it's something we've been talking about on the aircraft for a long time and so we're seeing that the numbers are where we, we where we would expect them to be at 800 hours, you're, you're well on your way to 2400. How many more hours can you add to that from your, your special ground testing that you have, your, your special plant? Well, there, yeah, there always there is a plan where some of the hours from the flight test will be uh, done on the uh, simulator that we have on the ground. And that's still in the process of discussion with the authorities, and uh, I'll leave that for uh, Rob to answer the next time you're talking to Rob. Right, but the 800 hours then are actual bird in the sky hours. That's right, that's right. Obviously, everybody in the world wants to know, certainly everybody in the industry wants to know, what do we expect from C-Series this year? In terms of, will you meet your, will you meet your, your targets? Yep. So we still expect that uh, we'll have, um, you know, the the order targets we set uh, by the time of entry into service. We're we're a considerable way to achieving that. We are going to finish up our testing this year on the 100, and uh, we still expect entry into service as we said this year. Do you want to give us any kind of clue of, let's say, geographically around the world where the biggest interest is on C series? Well, the interest is, is uh, worldwide. Certainly, we've seen a lot of interest out of Europe, and the primary reason Europe is interested in the airplane is it, it reduces your fuel burn, it's environmentally friendly, and it's light. Uh, that's, those are the three things that European airlines are always looking for. So certainly, Europe has been uh, a market that has been very interested in this airplane, but because of the range of the aircraft as well and the flexibility of the aircraft, we see interest from just about every geographic market. The, the, the sharp drop-off in, in oil costs or yeah. fuel prices mm -hmm. has got a lot of people in the conference here worried about sure. those orders for fuel-efficient airplanes. Mm. Obviously, at lower fuel prices, the economics of old airplanes, you know, 319s, for example, that you yep. compete with, yep. that, that their, life, their lifespan goes out further now. Mm. Any, any impact on, on interest in the C-Series because of the lower fuel price? No, we don't really see the impact. The, the C-Series as a value proposition, as a total value proposition, is more than simply the, the fuel burn. The, you know, we, we, we've started from scratch, so we have an airplane that, that is more fuel efficient. We have an airplane that delivers uh, a better noise footprint, much lower maintenance costs. All of those things are important to the airline, not just fuel burn. And in the end, the airlines don't plan over two years, they plan over 15 years, and uh, nobody really knows where the fuel price goes over 15 years. So the C-Series is still, uh, even at the low fuel prices, is still quite a good proposition. It will replace older airplanes, and uh, we don't see any change to that. Thank you. Thank you.